numbers to paint on. Notice the numbers 1 slash 10 at the left side of the menu bar. This means you are positioned on the first frame of a 10 frame animation. Now let's stamp an airplane in the upper left area of the screen. The airplane we just placed is on frame 1. The trick of animation is to paint slightly different pictures on successive frames. We need to move to the next frame. Choose Control Next from the Anim menu to move to frame 2. Notice that the menu bar now displays 2 slash 10. We'll stamp another airplane to the right of where the first one was. Now we have an airplane on frame 1 and frame 2. To create a series of airplanes that move across the screen, we'll just continue with this procedure. Choosing from the menu to change the frame number forces you to move the mouse when you want to change frames. It is much easier to move through the animation frames using keyboard equivalents. You can see them listed in the menu beside the various options. We'll use these to complete our little animation. Next we position our brush just to the right of the last airplane we stamped down. Press the 2 key at the top of the keyboard once. Then click the mouse button to stamp the new airplane. We can repeat this step until we have completed all 10 frames. The menu bar will show 1 slash 10 as our frame position meaning we have painted on each of the frames and now return to frame 1. We've just created a brief animation. Now let's play it. Choose Control Play from the Anim menu or just press 4 at the top of the keyboard. To stop the animation, press the space bar. We have just created an animation by painting on a series of frames individually. For animations that involve simple movement of an object, D-Paint 3 provides a much easier method called Anim Painting. Essentially, the frames flip automatically while you paint. Click on Clear. With multiple frames established, D-Paint gives you the option of clearing the current frame, a range of frames, or all of the frames. This simply removes images, but does not affect the frame count. In this case, we'll choose All Frames. All of our frames are cleared, and we are set back to frame 1. Now, let's do some anim painting. We will continue to use our airplane brush so click the dotted freehand tool. Hold down the left Amiga key or the Commodore key if you have an Amiga 500. Paint by holding down the left mouse button and scroll from left to right. As we paint, the frames flip so only one airplane is stamped on each frame of the animation. The frame counter in the menu bar shows us the frame we are on. When we reach the last frame, we loop back to frame 1 where we see our first airplane again. Now that we have painted for a few seconds, let's stop and play back the animation. We can stop the animation by clicking the mouse button or by pressing the space bar. Now we want to show you more ways to move things on the screen. The move requester lets you move and rotate a brush over a number of animation frames. More importantly, you can move and rotate the brush in all three dimensions. You are painting using perspective and D-Paint makes all the calculations for the individual frames. Let's clear the previous animation sequence. Next, choose Frames Set Number from the Anim menu. Change the frame count to 20 and click OK. Shift 1 will move us to frame 1 of the animation. Now, from the art disk, we'll load the brush called D-Paint Tile. Let's try one of the most basic moves. First, we'll stamp the brush in the center of the screen. Then choose Move from the Anim menu or the keyboard equivalent Shift-M. The first row in the Move Requester lists the axes in the three-dimensional space of your screen. If you're familiar with perspective, you know that the x-axis is left and right, the y-axis is up and down, and the z-axis is in and out of the screen. Directly below the x, y, and z labels, there are edit fields for entering distance numbers. This is where you describe how far the brush should move in any direction or combination of directions. In addition to moving the brush along axes, the Move Requester lets you rotate the brush around one or more axes. The buttons labeled Brush, to the right of the distance and angle edit fields, let you set whether you want to move and rotate on the screen axes or the brush axes. The Clear button resets all of the X, Y, and Z movement and rotation information to zero. The Go Back button affects the location of the brush. If you want to do a second move from the original brush position, click Go Back. 
The cyclic button toggles whether you want to chain your current move to another move or the move is linear and will end on the last frame. Ease in and ease out lets you specify a number of frames over which the brush is to accelerate or decelerate during the move. Count Edit is used to specify the total number of frames that the current move will utilize. There are two icons under the move label. The one to the left, Go From, will begin the move on the current frame. The icon on the right, Come To, is most useful when it's easier to specify the position where you want the move to end. The record options specify the direction in which the frames of your move are painted. The default setting paints the frames by flipping forward. In place, paints all of the move on the current frame. Reverse paints the frames by flipping backward. The preview button lets you see a wireframe of your intended move. Trails paints your animation frames, leaving a trail of brush stamps. Fill uses the various position and rotations to define an endless surface of tiles made from your brush. Clicking on Draw executes the move. Cancel forgets your settings, while Exit leaves the move requester but remembers the various settings. Now, with a better understanding of the move requester, let's try a couple of examples. Remember we loaded and placed the D-Paint 3 brush earlier. We're going to move it 200 units in the X direction. Now we can preview that movement. We see our brush enclosed in a wireframe, moved to the right across the screen. That looked okay. Now we'll change the distance to negative 200. This time we see the brush move to the left across the screen. Y distance moves the brush upward if the number is positive and downward if negative. Z distance moves the brush into the distance if positive or outwards to the screen if negative. You can use any combination of the three distance edit fields to move your brush anywhere in three-dimensional space. Let's try some simple rotation. First, clear the distance and angle edit fields. Next, we'll enter 360 degrees of rotation in the Z angle edit field. This tells D-Paint that we want to rotate the brush 360 degrees on the Z axis. Now preview. We see a wireframe representation of our brush rotate clockwise on the screen. Now by changing the Z angle setting to negative 360 degrees, we see the wireframe rotate counterclockwise. In our example, we've been moving a brush along the screen axes. As I mentioned earlier, we can move and rotate on either the screen axes or the brush axes. When your brush is in the standard orientation, movement on the brush axes is the same as the movement on the screen axes. If the brush is rotated using perspective, the brush axes may no longer correspond to the screen axes, and movement on the brush axes will be different. Choose Perspective, Do from the Effects menu. The Enter key also puts us in perspective mode. We'll move the brush down near the bottom of the screen and press Shift 7 from the keypad to flop the brush over on its back. Stamp the brush down. If we use the Move Requester to move the brush along the Y axis, we can see the difference between screen oriented and brush oriented movement. Let's try moving a Y distance of 200 and click Preview. We see the wireframe move upwards on the screen. If we select brush orientation, the brush will move into the distance along the brush's Y axis. You may have already guessed what will happen when we rotate the brush on its own axis rather than on the screen axis. This is sometimes difficult to visualize, so we'll give an example. Let's cancel out of the move requester and reset the perspective settings. At this point, we once again have our brush in the original orientation and are in the perspective mode. Now rotate the brush 45 degrees on the Z axis so that the X and Y axes of the brush no longer match the X and Y axes on the screen. Stamp this rotated brush down in the middle of the screen. Once again, use the Move Requester, but rather than using the menu, press Shift M, Move's keyboard equivalent. Set the X angle to 360 degrees and turn the brush button off. Click Preview. With this setting, we see the brush tumble towards the screen on the x-axis. Remember, the brush is rotating on the screen's x-axis. 